My name is uh, Vincent Omondi from Scales Technology Solutions Limited. We are dealing with scales and uh, POS systems. I'm going to take you through the features of CS6 and how it works. I hope you learn and enjoy. So here, first I'll take you through the features of this scale model CS6. So the features include, as you can see, it has a pole, the scale has a pole. So this pole enables the users, it raises up the screen, it has a dual screen as you can see, for the client at the back, and in front we have the, the user screen. At the back is where we have the client screen. We have the printer itself, where we use the thermal paper rolls for printing out receipts and maybe reports. We normally place our thermal paper roll in this format, as you can see, and then you press on the printer hand gently. Here we also have our stainless steel top plate, which uh, is uh, resistant to uh, water or moisture. We also have our dial pads. Dial pads here, this uh, PLU keypads over here, and here we also have our hotkey pad, or some people call it a shortcut keypad. This is where we program all our items from number 1 to 120. And it does not mean that the scale is uh, only accommodating up to 120 products. It can accommodate up to 12,000 products. So the scale itself is being connected to power and it can retain power because it is rechargeable. It has a rechargeable battery. So the scale itself uh, already have connected it to power source. It is charging, but once it has charged, it can retain power for a period of time. So here we have the power button. Be below the scale, we also have uh, ports. It can support a cash drawer. It also have the USB ports. It can connect to external printer. It has RS-232 port. It also has a Ethernet port because uh, the scale itself can connect to cloud. It is a cloud-based uh, scale that uh, can be connected on internet and relay data on the internet. We also have our part power button over here. You can see on and off. So this is where we power the scale on and we power it off. The scale is a rechargeable scale. It has got a rechargeable batteries. You can see here, this is the, where the, the, the port for charging is. You can see when I'm plugging the, the power cable off, then I can plug it in. Okay, now ladies and gentlemen, as uh, I've just said that the scale is able to print out uh, reports and receipts because it has got a printer. So that is one of the capabilities of the scale. It also does stock management. The scale can manage your stock. You can input the number of stock. You can manage as uh, you do sales. It deducts itself. At the end of the day, you can view your reports and see the stock of the products that are remaining in the inventory. Another uh, capability is that the scale can hold up to 12,000 products. We can program 12,000 products on the scale. It is not limited to uh, the buttons indicated on the hotkey. Because as you can see, the buttons over here are able to range from number one to 120. But it doesn't mean that it can only accommodate up to 120 products. It is able to accommodate 129 products up to 12,000 products. Another thing is that the scale can uh, accommodate more than uh, one vendor. We can assign different users at the same time so that uh, once a given user logs in with his or her credentials, at the end of the day, we can generate the product of that user who logged in so that we can see whatever he or she had sold in that particular day. 
The scale can also accommodate more than one customer at a time. Because, for example, maybe a client is still shopping and there is a client that has just walked in and uh, he or she wants urgent service, we can serve, uh, leave the other client pending as we serve the other client. I'm going to show you on how we can add uh, different vendors, different users to the scale. Now, for that, we are going to start by pressing on the set key button. Here is our set key button. Once I've pressed on the set key button on the screen, you will see option one is clearly indicating Clark Manage. So we are going to enter into Clark Manage. We enter by pressing on the cash key button. It will prompt us to input the manager number. In my case, it is one and the password is zero. Enter. Then you will see options like add option one option two is to delete option three is to set the manager password and name and credential and option four is to change password of the manager itself now we are interested in adding a new uh, user that is a new clerk or new vendor we are going to click on option one by pressing on cash key button it will prompt us to enter clerk number. We'll assign him the first number, that is number one. And then I enter. The next page it will open is to enter the clerk name of that particular vendor. Then we're gonna proceed by pressing on the hotkey button. This is where the alphabetical uh, keys are. So for example, let me assign Vim as our vendor. So Vin is the first uh, client, that is the client name. Once I'm done assigning the name, I press enter key button again. Okay. It will prompt me to enter the password, the clerk password. I'll set the password for that particular client. So for this case, let me uh, input one, enter. Then I confirm again by one, I enter that one. When you hear that sound, that means that I already uh, added a uh, first vendor, that is vendor one. And we can go ahead and add vendor two and vendor three. Let me add vendor two. In this case, I will proceed to add, press on enter button. On the screen, it will prompt us to enter the number of that particular client. And that is now clerk two. I enter. Once the client, uh, the, the, the clerk exists, it will uh, show you on the screen that the clerk exists. So already uh, that clerk is existing. Let's add a uh, clerk three. Let's try three. Clerk three. Now clerk three can pick. That means that we can add that clerk three. Name for that clerk three is uh, maybe a uh, Paul. Let me add Paul. Paul is the name for that uh, clerk. Once I've, uh, I'm done with the name, I'll enter to confirm the name. Then I'll set the password, password number three. And I'll confirm that password three again, done. So once I'm done, it will show me uh, all the privileges, all the rights that I want to grant that particular clerk. Option one is check all, that means that I'll allow all the functions to that particular clerk, but as well I can choose, I can select uh, which kind of uh, privileges that I can assign to that particular clerk. So in this scenario, in most cases, we normally assign vendor one all the functions, and vendor two and three, we normally uh, select some few privileges that we can assign him. For example, I can scroll down and assign him uh, to to print reports maybe or clerk manage or system set add stock let me give him adding stock and then check stock maybe i can give him check stock and then i can uh, grant him uh, open cash drawer 
Uh, once I'm done uh, assigning the privileges to that particular clerk, and then I can proceed by escaping, uh, by pressing on the escape button to go back. Already I'm done with adding uh, uh, the, 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 the clerks into the system. Now, let me show you how now we can uh, log in using clerk 1, clerk 2, or clerk 3. Then for me to go back to normal screen, to home screen, I'll escape by pressing on the escape key button. That is the power button. So on the screen, you will see clerk logout. That is the home screen. That means that we, are, we have gone back to home screen where we need to start again by logging in so that we can make any operation. So from there, you have to log in with either clerk 1, clerk 2 or clerk 3. On the screen, as I told you, that uh, it is indicated that vendor 1, vendor 2 and vendor 3. So I want to log in as vendor 2, because vendor 2 or vendor 3. Let me use vendor 2 in this scenario. So on the keypad, I'll punch or I'll press on a uh, vendor 2 keypad and it will prompt me to enter the, the number of that particular clerk. That is clerk 2. I enter and uh, again the password of that particular vendor is 2. Was 2. Nice. We go like that. Nice. On the screen you will notice that vendor 2 is blinking. That means that vendor 2 is active. He has logged in into the system. That means that vendor 2 is supposed to be operating the scale now at the moment. Now we can again log in to uh, vendor 3 account. Vendor 3 account, I'll simply press on V3 on the uh, PLU button and then on the scale it will prompt me to enter the clock number that is V, that is number 3. I'll press number 3 and then I'll enter again Clerk password was 3, uh -huh. 3, we input 3, and then we enter. On the screen, you will notice that V3 is blinking, that means that V3 is active on the scale. And again, V2 is also uh, active though it is pending, it is not blinking. The blinking vendor is the one that is active, that is able to make any cell. So up to there, that is how we add different clocks into the scale. At the end of the day, we can uh, as, uh, we, we can come up with a report of different uh, vendors so that we can monitor on each. I also would like to take you through on how we can add products on the scale. By this, uh, you can as well do editing on a particular product. Uh, maybe you want to change the price. Or you want to edit the unit of measurement so for that uh, reason i'm going to take you step by step on how we can add product and assign them the hotkey hotkey is a button so here we go first we have to enter into the set key button and that privilege is for vendor one because i had already assigned vendor one all the privileges like adding uh, products into the scale and doing other things. Now I will press on the set key button. Set key button. Once I'm there, I'll scroll down to option four that is set using the same set key button because it, it's a scroll down uh, button. Scroll down to set key option four. Then I enter by pressing on cash key. Once I open that page, it will show me basic set, clock operation, discount set, and payments. In this case, we are interested in the basic sets because we want to assign the PLUs. That are, those are the product itself. I'll enter into that basic set, that is option one, by pressing on cash key. Once I press on that cash key, it will open up another page with PLU set being option two. We move to PLU set scroll down to plu set like that and then you enter into plu set so once you are there uh, we are going to assign the barcode for that particular product in this scenario i'm going to start with barcode one let me assign my first product barcode one once i've punched on one i move to next by pressing on enter it will prompt me to enter the name of that particular PLU 
the PLE is the product itself. Then I'll proceed by typing the name of that particular item using the hotkey buttons. So the hotkey button is where we have the alphabeticals. So here, for example, let me add Apple as my first item. Once I punch Apple, I can proceed by punching cash enter key to move to next. It will uh, prompt me to enter to enter the, the, the price of that particular uh, item. So my first price in this case, I will assign it, uh, let me assign that Apple 50 shillings. 50 shillings, once I'm done, I save it by pressing on that cash enter button. Price two, uh, price three, I will assume. Price four, I will assume. Member price, no need, skip. Purchase price, in case you want to capture the purchase price from the vendor where you bought the particular item. For example, maybe I bought it at 40 shillings. I'll indicate. Once I capture it on that, purchase price, I move to next. Batch number. In case you want to follow up using the batch number of that particular product, you can add batch number. In this case, I can skip. And then we have the PLU type. Here you have to be very careful enough because here is where we are going to assign the units of measurement. Whether it is being weighed, this item is a weighed item or this item is uh, sold in pieces or pre-packed item. At times uh, we have uh, those items that have been pre-packed in uh, packages, so they are being sold in pieces. So in this scenario, we have options. Option four, as you can see on the screen, is pieces type. And uh, option two will be our weight item, weight item cargoes. So we either choose on option two or option four based on the unit of measurement of that particular product. So option two, I've said it is weighed cargo. As you can see, it is moving on the screen. Option two is given as weight cargo goods. So in this case, let me choose option two. That is Apple is being weighed. I'll press on number two. Once I press on number two, I enter to save that. And then allow manual changing of price. In case you need to change price manually on the keyboard, you give it a yes or no. Yes is one, no is zero. So in this scenario, by default, it is one. We can use that, no problem. And then we move to allow return mode. We can skip that. Department number, in case you have got different departments. In a scenario where we get that maybe a, client, a, a user of particular scale uh, is selling cereals. At the same time, he has grocery. So you can assign department for grocery, department for cereals, so in this case, we have only one department. Let me assume that I'm dealing with grocery. So I move to next by pressing on enter key button. Stock. Stock for that particular product, we can enter so that the scale will be able to monitor on the inventory part of that particular product. Here I'm going to enter 500 kgs because reason being, it is in kgs because that particular item, the unit of measurement that I used was kgs. That's why I'm pouring 500 kgs of that particular item. Now I move to next to save that. PLU stock warning. Like here is where we want to input the least amount of stock that whenever the stock reach that particular uh, amount of stock, it gives you warning to add more product. In this case, I can uh, put at 20 kg, the scale should be able to give us a warning that we are almost running out of stock. We add more stock. For what? For that particular product, that is Apple. So I've indicated 20 kgs. Once it is at 20 kg, it will alert us to add more product. We move. Once you get that sound, that means that particular item has been added and has been saved. We move to barcode number two. That is the next item. So the next item, I'll punch on barcode two. Press on two. 
press on enter key to save that the next it will prompt you to enter the name of that PLU number 2 so to replace on that PLU 2 you come on the hot key button you press on the <coughs> item name for example mango mango there it is there is my mango I proceed by saving that by enter key press on that enter key press it again then to enter that price we give it a price in this scenario let us assign it uh, maybe uh, 80 shillings 80 shillings once we done we proceed by enter key price 3 we skip price 4 we skip member price we skip purchase price let us assign purchase price for example we bought it at 50 shillings this one will enable us when we input the purchase price it will enable us to get the profit margin to monitor on the profit margin of each and every product at the end of the day we can monitor that this particular item is giving us this pro uh, profit margin so for that reason it is very important and then once you're done with there we proceed by pressing on enter key to save that batch number you can input uh, and if uh, you're not interested you can skip we go to the plu type <coughs> plu type is where we are signing the uh, the unit of measurement either weight or pieces so i said weight is option two and uh, option four is pieces so <coughs> since in my first product i used option two that is weight then let me use now pieces as option four I'll press on option 4, that is pieces, items. And then once I'm done with that, I'll save that by pressing on cash button. Allow manual change price. You can skip that. Just press on the cash button. Again, you skip return mode by pressing on the cash button. Department is 1 because I'm dealing with one department. That is a grocery. I'll move next by pressing on 1. Stock. Let me now input stock. Remember that this item, I've assigned it as pieces. So in this case, there are items that we can count. We can get the total number of this particular mango. So let me assume that I have uh, maybe 200 mango in stock. I'll enter 200. That is 200. Then I'll press on enter. Stock warning. I need the stock. I'll be warming up my stock at maybe at 50 whenever they uh, they reach 50 i'll be adding some more stock enter okay i was uh, i would also like to show you on how to operate the printer how to set it up before so we have got what we call uh, thermal printing papers thermal roll so this one is a thermal roll uh, for cs6 size this size is uh, generally for CS6X. So this is how we open up the printer. So the printer has got a, a, a clip. You gently push it up and then you pull it back gently like that. As you can see, you take your thermal paper roll. Here is how you place it on your printer. As that leaf faces up, you have to ensure that the paper faces up and it has to overlap outside. And then you go ahead and close your printer head gently. You hold both edges and then you press it gently. Once you feel that sound, it is done. Then you can proceed by cutting the overlapping paper like that gentlemen i'm now going to take you through on how to operate the scale by this uh, i'm going to show you demos on how to make cells how to uh, edit uh, items like adding up items on the scale uh, deleting items on the scale and managing our product uh, inventory in uh, the stock that are in the inventory so now, first and foremost, we have to uh, ensure that you know how to power up the scale. Currently, the scale, as you can see on the screen, it is powered off. So we have to power it on by pressing the power key button, that is escape key over here. You punch it once, 
and then you leave the scale for one to two seconds to initialize. You have to give it time to initialize. As you can see, my screen is lighting. Uh -huh. And uh, once it has initialized the scale, we have the scale has, has on itself, it has the demo product that I'm going to use for now to make one, two cells. Then after that, I'll show you on how to add new products on the scale and how to edit uh, current products on the scale. Uh, whether you want to edit on the prices or you want to edit uh, the unit of measurement, either you want to change a given product to be in weight mode or you want to change it to pieces. Because the scale itself has that function of changing to pieces or to weight mode. So here, uh, as you can see on the screen, the scale here uh, is blinking at V1. Confirm using the same same vendor that is selling on that particular time. And that vendor is vendor 1. You have to remember that vendor 1 was the one who is selling. I'll confirm using that button. Then I'll press on that vendor to confirm that particular sale. And again, uh, now that uh, the client was uh, buying more than one product, I'll continue and place another product on the scale. Let's assume this is Apple. I've placed Apple on the scale. I'll punch Apple on the hot, hot keypad. Apple is indicated on the scale. And Apple is going at 110, 110 shillings per kg. The weight of the Apple on the scale is 0 0.285. It will compute based on the kilos per kg that was indicated initially. And my price here is 31 shillings, 0.35 Kenya shilling. Once I'm satisfied that that is the weight of the Apple that I'm going to sell, I'll confirm using vendor one who is selling. I'll press on vendor one button. And that particular item is being added on the other item, the first item. So I want to come up with one receipt for both two items. I'll proceed and press on cash enter key button to print out the receipt and we see out how it will look like. Here is my receipt. My receipt is clearly indicating that I've bought mango at uh, 12 shillings. That is one. And I've also bought apple at 31 shillings. And the total amount of cash that I'm supposed to pay is 43 Kenya shillings. The clerk who had done that sale is clerk one. Uh, I'll now take you through on how to sell more than one item. By that I mean accumulating more than uh, one item on the scale at the same time so that you can come up with one uh, single receipt. Uh, for that case, uh, you have to log in, just I've just said, because on the screen is indicating that the clerk has logged out, so I have to log in as the vendor. So the vendor that I'm going to use is vendor one. I'll punch on vendor one button on the PLU. Once I've punched on vendor one, on the screen, it will prompt me to input the vendor number or the clerk number of that particular person who is logging in into the scale. For this case, it is vendor one because of, I'd uh, pressed on V1. I'll press one and then enter. You will see on the screen, vendor one is blinking. That means that clerk one has logged in into the scale, the scale. Now I want to sell apple and mango so that I come up with one receipt. So this is my apple on the scale. It has captured the weight on the screen. I'll punch on my hot keypad, that is Apple. You see Apple is displayed on the screen, 1 kg, of which we are selling Apple at 110 shillings per kg. 
So we are expected that the total amount of IOPO there is 110 shillings as indicated at the total uh, price. I'll confirm using the same button for vendor who is selling, that is V1. Once I've confirmed that, I'll take another product. Let's assume this is my mango. Put your mango on the scale and mango is weighing 2 kg. And then on the hot keypad, I'll punch on mango button. This is my mango button. And mango button is indicated on the screen uh, showing that 2 kgs of mango, the weight that I've put on the scale, and mango is being sold at 12 shillings per kg. Remember that it has been displayed also here, 12 shillings per kg. And uh, here it will compute the total price that is 24 shillings per kg based on the uh, kgs there. Now, once you've done that, you confirm using the same vendor. Remember that is vendor one. I press on vendor one key, then that particular product has been accumulated on the same uh, bill. Now, I'll proceed, I'll go ahead and proceed to print out a receipt. I'll press on the cash enter key button here to print out my receipt. Press it once, you get out your receipt, you pluck it off. So this is how the receipt will look like. We have Apple. I sold Apple at 110 shillings. That is here. The kg is 1 kg. Amount is also indicated here. That is 110. I sold mango and mango, my mango was weighing 2 kg. 2 kg, 1 kg, mango is being sold at 12 shillings. So for 2 kg is 24 shillings. And the total items that I've sold are also indicated on the receipt. That is two items. The total cash to be paid is 134 shillings. When we sum them up, it's 134. And the clerk is also indicated here that clerk one was the one who made that sale. And that is now, it. In a scenario where you want to sell more than one product, and maybe you're going to realize that uh, Maybe a client uh, have decided have decided that okay fine, uh, remove this particular product, or you have made an, a mistake or an error. You want to cancel. You want to void a given product, or you want to reduce a given amount, so that you print out a receipt that is uh, satisfying the client need. So in that case, I'm going to sell uh, the same same product that I've just sold. This is my. In this case, let me assume that. That mass is my uh, mango weight. So once I've placed my mango on the scale, I'll punch on product mango. And then I confirm with the vendor who is selling. I press on V1 to confirm that. I take my apple, place apple on the scale. It has captured the weight that is 2 kg. And I'll pre press on apple. On my hot keypad clearly indicates on the screen here and then I'll proceed by pressing V1 to confirm you confirm using V1 nice once we are there we realize that maybe the client uh, is saying that maybe uh, remove Apple or remove this uh, amount of cages because of this uh, money that I have uh, we can uh, void. So we have that voiding function or cancelling function. So I'll come here and press on the void button. You see the void button over here? It is void stroke refund. So I'll press on the void button. Once I press on the void button, on the screen, I have options to void last item, to void pre previous uh, item, or to void all. I can decide to void everything in case that sale is cancelled all, or I can void previous void, I can uh, void last item. So let me uh, move to option two, that is uh, previous uh, void. So I have scroll buttons again here scr for scrolling up and scrolling down. Set key button is used for scrolling down and V3 is used for scrolling up as indicated using the arrows. 
You can see the arrow in V3 is pointing upwards and the arrow in the set key button is pointing downwards. So when I press on set key button that points down, I'll be scrolling down. Press on it one. On the screen you will realize that I've scrolled down to previous void. Once I'm there, I'll enter. Okay. Okay, now uh, allow me take you through on how we can edit uh, the receipt so that whenever you print it out, it uh, has all the information of your shop. Now for us to uh, do that, we are going to enter, press on the set key button. This is where we open up the settings. So I press on the set key button once. Then the same set key button I'll use to scroll down to option 4. Option 4 is set. Scroll down to option 4, gently like that. Option 4, once I'm there, okay, I'll enter into option 4 by pressing the cache key. On that page, I'll have to scroll down again using the set key button, down, until I see receipt set. I go down, receipt set. Here is my receipt set. That is option 4 in that uh, uh, page. Now, in uh, receipt set, we are going to enter by pressing cash key and then we'll see uh, it will give us options like uh, print head logo print tail logos print uh, we set the messages and we set the tail the head messages and the tail messages as uh, indicated now uh, in this scenario we have to activate first uh, printing uh, logos in case we have logos you have logo, we can uh, insert logo using maybe flash disk or a computer to the scale. Once you have inserted that logo, we'll update by activating the head logo so that it will print head logo and the tail logo as well. In case that uh, you have your company has a tail logo, we first upload it. Then using a flash disk or a computer, we upload it into the scale. Now, let us now uh, go to setting of uh, messages, the set head uh, message, that is option three. We enter into settings of head messages. Now, in this uh, uh, setting of head messages, it normally gives us uh, five index. Five index, by that I mean five fields. The first line, the second line, third, up to fifth line. So, in this scenario, we're going to assign the first index by pressing on number one. That is the first index, the first line on the topmost. For example, one, and then enter. So, I've pressed one, then I'll give it a message, head message. Now, the particular message itself, I'll proceed by typing the particular message for heading one. Now, in this case, let me assume that it is scales technology solution. I'll proceed by typing on the hotkey pad scales scales and then we have a space a spacing button in between words is SP number 54 pad here it is indicated SP to give a space between words press on it once and then scales technology I proceed Technology, uh, maybe uh, it's okay like that. Uh, it depends with the name of your company. I can leave it at that point. That is my the name of my company. Once I'm satisfied with that, I'll proceed by saving that by pressing on enter key button. That I've set the first line. Now the second line, I'll again enter into that setting of the head message. I proceed by pressing on the cache key. And then I assign index number two. Because index number one I've already entered the name of the company, I move to index number two. In that case, that is the second line, enter. Then index number two, already I can see here it uh, has a default number. This is a telephone number of a company. In this case, maybe I can decide to input maybe my PO box location for this company. PO box. In this case, let me use my company uh, box number, PO box, uh -huh, 131, like that. So that is my company uh, PO box number, and then I can proceed by saving that. 
by pressing on enter key. Then again, maybe I want now to assign maybe the location itself in uh, Nairobi. Let me call it Nairobi or maybe a number. Then again, I'll continue on the same, same set head message. I press on enter and then I assign index three now. That is line three in that case. Line three, enter. I can see by default it is Nairobi. I can decide to change the location based on uh, where my company is located. Uh, let me just use Nairobi in that case. It is already set, Nairobi. And then once it is there, I can now save it. Now let me go to uh, uh, setting the tail message. That is the message that appears below, beneath the last messages that normally appear below the receipt. So normally you get that um, in most uh, receipts, they normally state things like, uh, thank you for shopping or welcome again. Uh, let me now go and we set one. Scroll down to set, tail message, and then you enter by pressing the cash key button. It only has, uh, in this case, it only has two, two fields, that is two lines. So first line, I assign number one, okay? Uh, by default, it is thanks for shopping. Let me uh, say welcome again. In my case, I want to uh, rewrite my statement by saying welcome again. Again. Uh -huh. Once you're done, you save by pressing cash enter key. My receipt is now set and ready to print. Now. I have to activate the mode, the head and the tail. So I will scroll up by using V3 button. It's a scroll up button. Let me scroll to activate print head. I enter. Currently it is at no, you can see. So I have to activate it to be yes, so that whenever I print it out, it will in come up with all the information of the head and the information of the tail. I have to activate by saying yes, okay. And then also I activate print tail logo. Here I scroll to number two, enter. And then I activate by pressing on yes. So the receipt once I'll be doing my sale, I'm going to do one sale so that we see how the receipt will look like. Okay, now guys, here we go. I go back to my home screen by pressing on the escape key button. And now here we are. You can see on the screen uh, already V1 is active, vendor V1. That uh, means that we can work with V1 to do this sale so that we can see how the receipt will look like. So here is my mango. Place your mango on the scale. And uh, that mango of mine is reading uh, two kgs. Then press on uh, mango. Here, mango. Here is mango. Mango is being sold in pieces. So this is one piece of mango. Suppose maybe there are two or three mangoes, we can uh, multiply. By that we do by, you multiply the quantity by pressing on the quantity. Once you press on the quantity keypad, and then you multiply by the total number of pieces that you are selling, because mangoes are being sold in pieces, I'll multiply by, by five. I'm selling, let me assume that I'm selling five pieces of of uh, mangoes. In that case, enter. Once I've entered that, I confirm using V1 because V1 is the one who is supposed to be selling. As you can see, it is blinking on the screen. Confirm. Five pieces of mango at 80 shillings each. Total price is going to be 400 shillings. It has uh, computed that price. So uh, let me proceed and print out the receipt and see how the receipt looks like. Press on the cash enter key. This is our receipt. Nice. On our screen, our receipt here, we have the PO box number, the Nairobi, uh, tail number, till number, and we also have the details of the particular product. Then down here, we have the welcome note that is welcome again. So this is how the receipt can be edited according to your preference. Thank you. Okay, fine. Uh, allow me now to take you through uh, the stage of now inventory management, how we can manage our inventory, uh, starting from uh, adding stock. 
doing away with the uh, stock that maybe uh, has spoiled or uh, editing uh, your stock. So for this case, uh, we have to uh, enter our setting uh, settings first by pressing on the set key button as normal. So this is the set key button. This is where we enter the setting modes. I enter by pressing it once. Then once I'm there, I have to scroll down to set key. That is option four. Scroll down to set button. Enter into set button. I'll see a uh, basic set clock operation and so forth. But I'm only interested in a uh, basic set. I enter again into basic set. Basic set. Once I have entered basic set, I'll have to scroll down up to stock, where I'll, I'll see PLU stock. So scroll down gently to PLU stock, and here it is, that is PLU stock, option 4. So under PLU stock, I'll uh, enter into PLU stock to open it. So here you will see options like search, search the PLU stock, you can search. You can add PLU stock, option two. You can delete PLU stock. Maybe you want to uh, do away with a given stock. Uh, maybe it has uh, expired. Uh, uh, you can also, at the same time, uh, wastage of uh, PLU stock is the same as deleting because maybe it, uh, you realize that uh, some mangoes uh, have just expired, maybe rotten, you get rid of them by deleting or you remove them. That is also wastage of our PLU stock removing. Now, let me go to search, uh, searching PLU. This will help us to know. Uh, we, we are trying to search the PLU stock so that we can see, we can view the stock that we have currently in the scale. So here, when I enter into that, I'll assign the PLU code of that particular item that I want to search. I want to search so that I see how much stock do I have currently in the system of that particular product? So I have to get the PLU code of that particular product. For example, PLU 1, that is product number 1. Once I press on 1 and then I enter, press on enter key button, it is Apple. Already I've searched for a Apple and you can see Apple, Apple was my first product actually and it was, uh, mm, I had the input uh, 500, uh, Kgs, you remember? 500 kg was uh, the, the, the total stock for Apple in that case. And now you can uh, see already it has dropped down to 495 because I've been making sales over here. And uh, now the stock is reducing as we make sales. So the more we make more sales, it will reduce, reduce as we continue. Now, uh, for that case, we can add. Let me just add some more stock on this so that you see if we can add it to 1,000 maybe. So I'll escape. I'll go back by pressing on escape key button and then scroll down to add PLU stock. You see that option too? I want to add. So when I press on add PLU stock, I enter, then it will prompt me to enter the vendor number, to input the vendor number, maybe the person whom I'm uh, fetching the products from. I'm buying this product from maybe uh, this particular vendor. I'll enter the number of that particular vendor. Let me just use one for my case. Let me assume that my vendor is uh, vendor one. I input that vendor one, then I save. Then it will also show me to input the DC number. That one you can skip or you can just uh, give it one by default. And then we move next, barcode. Barcode is the PLU number, the same as the PLU number of that particular product that you want to add more stock for it. So let me add stock of Apple. I want to add 500 on top of 495 stock. So product code was one, enter. So here, the purchase price, it, it will also prompt me to input the purchase price. This one will help us when uh, we want now to get the profit margin in terms of uh, uh, selling. So in this case, maybe I'm, uh, I had inputted, once I was uh, inputting, once I was uh, assigning that particular product on the scale, I had assigned it 40 shillings for 
buying price. So once it is there, I can just enter. Okay, and then the PLU stock now that I want to add. I want to add uh, five, uh, 500. 500 kg. Once I've inputted 500 kg, I'll proceed by pressing on the enter cash key button. That already has just added stock on top of my apple. So let me go back and see whether that stock has been added up. So when I go back using the escape key button to escape that page so that I, I go to search button, I'm going back to search button over here, scroll up, enter, and then enter the PLU code of that particular product one. That was Apple. It was number one. One, enter. You realize that Apple now stock is 995. So it has added up 500 plus 495 that was there initially. When we add it up with the new stock, it totals up to 995. So whenever we do sales, whenever we sell the Apple, it will be reducing with the time. So we have to keep on check, checking. And remember also, we had inputted the stock warning uh, uh, amount where whenever it reaches uh, 20 kgs of uh, uh, Apple, it will alert us to add more stock on top of that. Now, when we go to search option, that is a PLU number two, the product, the, the, the product number two, that was mango. I'll go back to PLU, I search the PLU, and then I enter into that. PLU, it will prompt me to enter the PLU code, PLU number two for mango. I'll press number two, then press enter. Mango, I've sold mango, already I've sold about seven pieces, of which initially mango was 200 pieces. You remember that? So now that you can see here, it has gone down to 193. So let me just add stock of mango so that it can add up to maybe uh, 300 or 400 or so. So I'll escape back by pressing on the escape key button. And then I scroll down to add PLU stock. Once I'm there, I enter. Then the vendor number, who is the supplier for that mango actually, I'll give the number. That is maybe number two. I'll let, and then the DC number, I can either give it or skip. Let me just give it one in that case. Then we continue. So here, the barcode of that particular product that we want to add more stock, it was number two, remember? Number two, again, we press and then we enter. So here, the purchase price that I had assigned initially as I was assigning that particular product, that is mango for each, was 50 shillings. This is the buying price. I can decide to change maybe based on uh, the vendors who are selling. Maybe they have... Uh, uh, drop down the price or they are hiked. So in this case, let me just uh, leave it at 50 and I enter and input the stock that I want to add up. So I want to add maybe 200, again, 200 mangoes. Let me add 200 mangoes over there. You see 200 is added, I enter. That has been added on top of the remaining stock that was there in the inventory. And here, we can confirm by going back, by pressing the escape key button, and then we move up to search and enter into search. Input the PLU code, that is PLU number two, number two, and then enter. When you look at the screen, it is clearly indicating that Mango is now 393. Because initially it was 193, and I've added, I've topped up 200 Mangoes. So that is summing up to 393, of which when you keep on selling, it will keep on reducing with the time. So this is how uh, the scale will help you to monitor on the inventory and keep on track. This will, uh, at the end of the day, you can come up with reports of the inventory. You monitor how the sales are going on now. Okay, uh, now that I've uh, made... Uh, some uh, sales. I want to show you on how we can generate reports of the sales that we have just made uh, today. 
so that we can see how uh, at the end of the day we can come up with a general report for the operations that we have done uh, with the scale. Now, for me to come up with the report at the end of the day, on the PLU keypad, I'll uh, press on the uh, set key button here. Once I've pressed on the set key button, on the screen it will indicate options like lock manage, X report, and Z report. In this case, we are interested in printing out the Z report. Z reports are general reports. So we scroll down using the set key button to Z reports. That is option three. Once we are there, we can press on enter, cache, enter key button to open up the Z report. That is to print out the Z report. I proceed by punching that and it will prompt me to input the uh, manager password, the manager credential. Because uh, you find, you'll find that in most scenarios, the managers are the ones who normally come uh, to print out the, uh, the reports at the end of the day. So in my case, my uh, password uh, number is one, uh, and that is zero. So I'll proceed to print out my Z report, that is option one, by punching on enter key button. Now let's have a look at our Z report on how we have made sales today. So on the receipt, it will summarize uh, the sales that the sales amount, the total sales amount that we made, the total count of sales that we made. For example, we may, we've just made a two, total count of two sales. We have sold for two clients, and also it will also capture the total amount of uh, shillings that we've sold. That is uh, 354 shillings. It will also capture, on the receipt will also capture the voided, the cancelled uh, items that uh, we did away with. As you can see clearly that we cancelled uh, 12 uh, shillings. That is one product clearly indicated. So the takings here are just the same as the, the information that we have just uh, uh, saw up there. That is uh, two uh, items that we sold, I mean two sales and the total amount and the grand total is also indicated down here. The clerk who made the sale also is captured on the receipt. That is clerk one. The, the total quantity of sales that he did were, were two. And the amount of shillings uh, that he made is Kenya shillings 354. And the grand total now will summarize the sales that the scale itself uh, has been making since the time it start it, it was uh, uh, um, since this uh, the scale started working sorry okay fine i think up to there uh, we are good to go and i hope uh, you've enjoyed and learned something from uh, the lesson thank you mm -hmm.